been on the Gip for 9 days now, survived hundreds of kilometers of corrugations and are now heading to one of the most iconic destinations on the Gip, El Cuestro Station. is right now to be driving on bitumen. CBD Springs. If you wanna, if you wanna swim here, you have to be here before 12. So, go check it out. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> We've been sitting in here for so long to get my hand. Long. He's an old man. <laughs> you can sit in here all day if you wanted to. Park. So now we are heading out and we're heading to the next site. We are at the Belia Gorge. Yep, so we're doing the walk here. It's 3.4 k's return to be class 4 and possibly have a swimming hole. Bye, Ele. See you at the top. <laughs> Go for a swim. It's pretty hot out. We found some Aboriginal art on the way. Now we're trying to figure out if there's some more down here. Sunrise, 
How was it? Awesome. It gets cold towards the other side, so nice and refreshing. So we are now driving to the campground of El Cuestro and I should have worn different shoes. Um, we got to the first crossing with flowing water. So like always, walking to the other side and I'm gonna show you. It's pretty cool. Once we made it to the station and paid for our site, we were told about a cool swimming hole right next to the campground. Look at this beautiful spot! Don't fall, Patrick. Jump in. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. We are swimming in the famous croc infested Pentecost River, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good morning! We are heading to El Cuestro Gorge today after we had an amazing night yesterday with some friends and espresso martinis. <laughs> And to get to El Cuestro Gorge, you have to drive through a, through, through a few river crossings and one is one meter deep. So you can park your car before that and walk around, but we'll drive it. We need to wash our mug a bit and yeah, that's the deepest we've done then. Yep, excited to see how that goes, how it feels. <laughs> like a boat. <laughs> On the way, we're doing a quick warm up in the Pentecost. across the river and we saw a few people in the campground drying their cars for days because there was water in them everywhere. We are at the famous crossing. It looks very crocky. Um, I'm walking along it, so there's this walking trail. Got a UHF and two cameras. And then I'll film it from the other side. It will be sick. It will be so sick. Check this out. It's such a lovely walking track. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. It's pretty gross and deep. <laughs> so for the way back, I just told Patrick I'm not walking this again. It's 
disgusting and right at the end it gets really muddy and I was in the mud until, up until my knee Ugh. so on the way back I reckon I'll sit in the mug I'm not walking again or maybe Patrick should walk ready set go So usually people try to um, catch a ride across and I can totally understand why because that walk is not fun like literally I sank in the mud until my knee and you never know it's like you walk and suddenly you're dipping a hole and then I had a camera and I was like no <laughs> while well, he was sitting in the truck waiting pretty comfortable <laughs> That was sick guys, it was so sick. All right, let's head to the parking lot and do the hike. Woo, Sandy. You happy? That was pretty fun, yeah. How <laughs> was it sitting in here? Oh, it felt like being in a boat. All of a sudden the water kept getting higher and higher. I was like, ah, oh, okay. Did you turn on the camera? Patrick had one task, right? And that was to turn on the GoPro up there. And guess who didn't do that? Boots recommended. All right, we are starting the El Cuestro Gorge hike. It was a fun little water crossing and the full drive track isn't really a full drive track other than the big water crossing. Um, but yeah, this is apparently the main attraction of the Gib River Road, so I'll show you what it's all about. Yeah, and everyone that can't take the full drive across, it's a not so fun walk in. <laughs> So it says on the sign that you should wear boots to do this walk but actually we reckon water shoes with a good um, sole yeah, if you have water shoes are probably the sole, best. Definitely wear them. Um, definitely don't come do this with flip flops because you're constantly walking over rocks and then through water and then over rocks and through water. Yeah, so, like yeah. really. so good water shoes with a good sole would be the ideal thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go Patrick. So the spot we just crossed is called Halfway Pool and that's where a lot of families stop, especially with smaller kids. Because there's a nice little pool and then a big boulder you can jump off. So it's heaps of fun for them. But we want to continue all the way to the end to get to the falls. So we had to climb up the boulder on the left side and now pretty much walking in the water. <laughs> So 
So this is the part called the squeeze. You have to kind of squeeze through the rock here, like it is doing. And there's a crystal clear pool right next to it. is so sick. Check it out. Check it out. so cool. That was worth a long hike up here, that's for sure. We found another little pool on the way down, which looks amazing. So clear. All to ourselves. Do you like it? <laughs> Someone's having fun at the halfway pool. <laughs> Jumping with all the kids. <laughs> all right, that's it. We're back in the truck. I'm heading to the one meter deep crossing. The El Cuestro Gorge is probably one of our favorites. Yeah. It's in Australia, amazing. It's really good. The walk is amazing. The swimming spots are amazing. It's a heap of fun for kids as well. It can be quite challenging. So yeah, you have to be bit fit and need water shoes as well but honestly the scenery insane yeah, it's so worth it like it's a long walk to the back but definitely do it even if it takes you all day it is amazing one of my favorite places in Australia so now let's get into the crossing this time Patrick had someone to remind him to turn on the camera here we go again Pressurization. <laughs> Did we actually need it this time? I didn't feel like I had done enough hiking that day, so I swapped out Yele for our new friend John and did an extra 10 kilometers to Champagne Springs.
<laughs> and you've got four feet. If you want to use it that much, then you're paying for it. She got up at 4.15 today to see the sunrise at the Pigeon Hole Lookout and it's amazing, the view's beautiful and what makes it even better, we spotted a huge salty swimming down there. Just like that, they can disappear even in shallow water. Camping isn't your thing, you can stay at the homestead with rooms starting at $2,800 a night. Extra cushioning in it. <laughs> Give me the bum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, generally, as soon as you get out of the cities, so everyone's lucky. always very helpful. Because, Whoa. Like if you if you get stuck. <laughs> <I'm okay. laughs> oh, digging. Oh, 
Tight. We're crawling up. So beautiful. Yeah, me too. After a great morning exploring, it's time to head back as El Cuestro is closing their gates today. Unless you want to stay in the luxurious homestead. So that was our Gib trip. Um, we've got a little full drive track coming up, but even though our Gib trip got cut short, the amazingness of El Crestro has definitely made it all better. Um, it's a shame that everything's closing early, but we made the most of it. And El Crestro is actually closing today, so we have to be out the front gate by 2 o'clock. It is now 11 o'clock, and we got CBD Springs pretty much to ourselves. This is amazing. Yeah, this is such a cool spot. Like, I'm not a big fan of caravan parks, but the orchestra has a nice spot here. Even though it's expensive. and we're just on the way out we ran into a closed gate so Patrick's having a look if you can open it but it doesn't look like it we're stuck <laughs> all right it was dummy long we managed to open it closed and we are closing it Last ones to leave El Cuestro this year. <laughs> it's closed now and we are going back to the Pentecost. Yeah. Because this is the start of the Karunji track, an alternative four-wheel drive route to Wyndham. I reckon 